the next the next game in the slew of AAA blockbusters has uh, has dropped. It's uh, it's dishonored, and no doubt you'll have seen all the reviews up to now. You know it's an amazing game. You've come to this review because I know how you like it. I know how you like it. Unscripted, unpolished, unprofessional. It's the triple U review. I'm the franchise. So we're gonna get balls deep in in Dishonored. See what it's all about. See what this crazy world of wailing, not wailing as in like a ghost, wailing as in wailing, the act of killing a whale. So it's sort of like men with sideburns and giant hands. Everybody's got chops. And everybody's got giant hands. It's just amazing. And listen, we're going to get into it. We're going to do it the way I do it. Unscripted, unpolished, unprofessional. We'll just work our way through. Same, same applies. We've got some footage of the game. Yeah, set in the first, let's say, three to four hours of the campaign, maybe. Depending on how long you take when you campaign. I went through sort of looking for all the collectibles, of which there are many on every level. Um... But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Start at the beginning. What does it look like graphically? What does it look like? I mean, you can say there. It's a stunning game. It's a stunning game. It's very Bioshock esque in my eyes. Um, it falls short in comparison to Bioshock where the story's concerned. Um, but graphically, just there's just so much about it. Just smacks of like Rapture. Just this sort of dystopian dystopian that's a word isn't it forgive me it's very very late very late so this steampunk-esque world just looks amazing you've got all this sort of oil powered machinery essentially like i was saying earlier on about wheels like this wheels literally power this universe just they, they use the wheel oil to power all the machinery they use Whale bones to make runes that you collect. So sort of there's like bone charms as well, like also carved out of whale bone. Just the whole thing. It's just all of it. Whales, like Hayden Panettiere and her bunch of mates, must be have a nightmares about this game. Ah, oh, pick up Dishonored. See, see what kind of. Oh my God, they're killing whales everywhere. It's just craziness. Just whales power the whole universe. But it's it's super cool as well. Yeah. So graphics slick. Just really slick. Can't fault them at all. Um down to the littlest details as well. Just tremendous. So we'll go into sort of where do you go from the graphics? Well what's what's the crux of the story, I suppose? The sort of in amongst all of these sideburns and Whale death. It's just like a the story of betrayal. Betrayal in a city with a naughty rat problem. Like a ridiculous rat problem. Just like murderous little rats. Just carrying disease. That's ravaged the land. So, so again, I don't think the story's that strong. It, it's followable. But for me, it was the gameplay that dragged us through this game. Not the story. Not like like your Bioshocks, which is an obvious comparison, sort of graphical style and whatnot. It's the actual gameplay that dragged me through this game, more though, more so than the story. Um, and that sounds perfect. A perfect segue into talking about the gameplay to me. Hmm. Gameplay. Let's get a gameplay on. So essentially, it's it. You play it how you want. A lot of people say it's a stealth game, um, which. It's probably one of the better stealth games on the market at the minute. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, this game is played better stealth. But that's not to say that that is the way you have to play the game. It's nuts, right? I know there's a lot of games out there where it's like, play it your way, open world, do whatever the hell you want. Like this game, you literally can. Like there's been very few games where it's you've, you're given the option to play it however the hell you want. There's about at least, at least, I'd say, ten ways of doing anything in this game. I'm not, I'm not even lying here either. Like, I've replayed some of the missions just to see how many different ways you could do it. And you can either go gung-ho, 
get your sword out, just go killing people, you've got guns, you've got crossbows, you've got your trusty sword, you've got all these sort of supernatural abilities as well, like an age you in combat, like uh, just bringing up a swarm of rats, just summon a swarm of rats, just to eat people, just possess, possess a dog, possess a dog and just run about, possess a rat, right, is a good one for you, this, you can actually do this as well, you've got like a, a bar, not a barbed wire, but it's like a razor wire bomb sort of thing. You can chuck one of them on the back of a rat, possess that rat, run it into a populated area, and then just jump out of the rat, hide yourself, and the rat will inevitably just walk too close to the enemy, and the bomb on the back of the rat goes off. You have like a living bomb. Just tremendous. Just who thought of that? But uh, so there's literally a million ways to play any one of the missions in this game. It's sort of an open world. It's set in in a in a city predominantly. Um, it, it's it's not like your Grand Theft Auto style open world. You go to your base, your HQ essentially, and you get missions. He's not like a, the main character Corvo, the the silent broody bastard that he is. Never really speaks in the whole game. But he sort of his allegiance lied with the empress, or I, th I believe she's an empress. She ends up getting brutally murdered. That's not a spoiler, by the way. That happens in the first five minutes. If you weren't expecting that from the reviews, then I apologise. Uh, but you sort of take on the role of an assassin to to avenge the death of uh, this woman, um, and the 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 trail of deceit. And betrayal that you find yourself in, but like, like I've seen you play it any way you want. So you get the mission. You've got to assassinate this guy. You've got to assassinate that guy, and it's sort of you don't have to kill him. Like although you you've got to assassinate him, there's a non-lethal way of doing everything. You could play this whole game without killing anybody. You can use sort of sleep darts or creep on people and choke them out, and then when it comes to it. When you get your actual final target, you don't even have to kill your final target. You can like there is non-lethal ways of doing everything in this game. There's actually an achievement to be had by not killing anybody. I, I don't have it because inevitably the urge to kill is strong in this one, the dark side. But uh, there's so many entertaining ways to kill people as well. That's what I don't get. It would be easy enough to do this game without killing anybody if I didn't think killing them looked so cool. Sort of stealth not on people and just slitting the throat or sticking a knife in the back of the neck or like I think in the video I put sort of a, a sequence where I might have just been on where I rewired uh, a light wall which essentially blows you up if you walk through it. You can rewire it so it attacks the enemy instead of you. So they walk through it or if you draw them to it then you just wipe out a good five enemies. Just easy as pie. So uh, we're going to go from there. So. Uh, so I've showed you the supernatural elements sort of thing, you've got like your, your little teleport move, but uh, ah, that's a good one. If you play this game stealth and don't kill anybody, you'll see the world around you change. Either way you're going to see the world around you change. If you go the good route, the, the non-lethal route, the world around you changes for the better. There's like less rats for some reason that just haunt the streets. There's less wanderers. Wanderers are like, I think they're called wanderers. I could be wrong. Or whalers. Not, no, nah, not whalers. Wanderers, maybe. It's essentially this game's version of a zombie. Somebody who's been affected by the plague. That's like attacked the land, ravaged the land. And they're, they're, they're just long gone. They're just literally walking corpses waiting for death. If you go around killing loads of people and there's just death everywhere, there's more rats because they're attracted to all the death. And there's more like wanderer people. For some reason, because the the plague's just spreading and all this disease and corpse, the game does actually change depending on the way you play it. It's not like when the games claim to sort of, or oh, you you determine the outcome of this universe. It is actually you do actually determine what happens. You might do something in one mission. You might kill somebody that you would need in a later mission. So the universe has totally changed. You might have went through as a murderous bastard like I have for the for the first few hours, and just the streets change. There's more rats. It's just a darker sort of world to live in. It's just amazing. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of wrap it up there. I think I've I've rabbited on a bit. I think I've covered everything. Really, that's the problem with being unscripted. Anyway, yeah, I've been a franchise. This has been Dishonored. Definitely on the must buy list. Um, if you like stealth games, if you like a bit of murder, if you like first person shooters, uh, just get involved. Really, it's worth your time. Until next time, laters.